All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Allah is well pleased with the first immigrants and Ansar and those who follow them in good deeds, and they are well pleased with him. He has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they shall abide forever. That's the supreme triumph. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our master Prophet Muhammad is a slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, upon his household, companions, and upon those who follow him to the day of judgment. As the Almighty Allah selects from his servants the prophets who are characterized by their pure hearts, clarity of minds, noble traits, and sublime moralities to convey his messages, he also selects for his prophets those who are qualified to be their companions and defend their messages and support them faithfully. The Almighty Allah says, God chooses messengers from among the angels and from among men. God is all hearing, all seeing. <clears throat> Thus, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are the best generation of the Muslim nation, being the bearers of the purest hearts, the most knowledgeable and the most tolerant. There should be no wonder because they were chosen by Allah to accompany the Prophet peace be upon him and support Islam and convey it to people. In commenting on Allah saying, say, O Prophet, praise be to God and peace upon the servants he has chosen, Ibn Abbas said, the chosen ones are the companions of the Prophet. Ibn Mas'ud also said, Allah looked into the hearts of people and he found the heart of Muhammad peace be upon him to be the best among them. And so he chose him for himself and sent him with, with his message. Then Allah looked into the hearts of people after Muhammad and he found the hearts of his companions to be the best hearts. So he made them the, minister of his, the ministers of his prophet who defend his religion. Thus, whatever the Muslims view as good is good to Allah, and whatever they view as evil is evil to Allah. Undoubtedly, when one reviews the book of the Almighty Allah, he becomes he, or he comes to realize the high status and great virtues of the companions of the Prophet. They are the ones whom Allah has, uh, has been pleased with and ascertained the truthfulness of their faith as he says God was pleased with the believers when they swore allegiance to you O Prophet under the tree he knew what was in their hearts and so he sent tranquility down to them and rewarded them with a speedy triumph exegetes of the Quran say it means that Allah knew their patience truthfulness loyalty submission and pursuance of the truth he guided them to. Allah praised the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him in many positions in the glorious Quran. For example, Allah says, those who responded to God and the messenger after suffering defeat, who do good and remain conscious of Allah, will have a great reward. Those whose faith only increased when people said, Fear your enemy, they have amassed a great army against you. And who replied, God is enough for us. He is the best protector. Returned with grace and bounty from God, no harm befell them. They pursued, pursued God's good pleasure. God's favor is great indeed. Also, the Almighty Allah says about the Muhajirin or the immigrants, and an Ansar, the people of Medina. He says, the poor immigrants who were driven from their homes and possessions, who seek God's favor and approval, those who help God and his messenger, these are the ones who are true, shall have a share, those who were already firmly established in their homes in Medina and firmly rooted in faith show love for those who migrated to them for refuge and harbor no desire in their hearts for what has been given to them they give them preference over themselves even if they are too poor those who are saved from their own souls greed are truly successful 
Just like the Quranic verses praised the companions of the Prophet, the hadith of the Prophet affirmed their high status and showed their sacrifices and truthfulness. They are the ones who supported the Prophet, helped him, and followed the light revealed to him. They loved him more than they loved themselves or their families and all people. Therefore, the Prophet praised their great virtues and witnessed to their noble attitudes. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The best of my followers are those living in my generation, then those who will follow them, then those who will follow the latter. He also said, <clears throat> The stars are a source of security for the sky, and when the stars disappear, there will come to the sky what is promised. I am a source of security for my companions, and when I'm gone, there will come to my companions what they are promised. And my companions are a source of security for my ummah, and when my companions are gone, there will come to my ummah what they, what they are promised. In another hadith, the Prophet said, You will continue to be in a good condition as long as there are among you some of those who saw and accompanied me. I swear you will continue to be in a good condition as long as there is still among you, you those who will see my companions. The third generation is given this status as in the hadith only because they accompanied the, prophet, the companions of the prophet the prophet peace be upon him gave a special commendation for some of the companions due to their virtues especially those who embraced islam first he said the most merciful of my my ummah towards my ummah is abu bakr the one who adheres most sternly to the religion of Allah is Omar. The most modest of them is Uthman. The best judge is Ali ibn Abi Talib. The best in reciting the book of Allah is Ubay ibn Ka'b. The most knowledgeable of what is lawful and unlawful is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And the most knowledgeable of the rules of inheritance is Zayd ibn Thabit. Once the Prophet, peace be upon him, ascended the mountain of Ahud, and he was accompanied by Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, the mountain shook beneath them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, hid it with his foot and said, O Ahud, be firm, for on you there is none but a prophet, a truthful one, and two martyrs. The Messenger of Allah also said, showing the status of Abu Bakr and Umar, the people of the highest degree in paradise will be seen by those beneath them as a rising star is seen in the horizon. Abu Bakr and Omar will be among them, and how blessed they are. The Prophet was keen on showing the status of his companions and to demonstrate their honor and virtues to encourage them and to motivate them to serve as rule models for other members of the Ummah. He said about Abu Bakr, Do not do my companion wrong. Allah has sent me with the guidance and the religion of truth. But people said, You are a liar. Abu Bakr said, You are truthful. Referring to Omar, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah Most High has placed the truth on the tongue and heart of Omar. As for Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, the messenger said, Shouldn't I show modesty to one whom even the angels show modesty to? While speaking about Ali, he said, You are from me and I am from you. He who carefully examines the hadith of the Prophet on his companions and his testimony to them, will certainly realize that Prophet peace be upon him gave the best, the best example in loyalty, sincere love and good treatment in an unprecedented way. For he used to feel about their pains, feel pity for them, ask for 
abstain from them, visit the patients, attend their funerals, accept their invitations, consult with them in different matters, shower them with his mercy, repay debts on their behalf, and they invoke Allah for them and their children. <clears throat> in this regard, Aisha narrated that the Messenger of Allah came unto Uthman ibn Mada'un, may Allah be pleased with him, who was then dead. He bent down, kissed him, and wept heavily that tears rained down his cheek. Also, <clears throat> one day after the end of one of the Prophet's battles with the Polyphists, he inspected his companions and said to them, is anyone missing amongst you? They said, so and so. He again said, is there anyone missing amongst you? They said, so and so. He then, he then said, is there anyone missing amongst you? They said, no. Thereupon the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, but I am missing. They, the companions searched for him amongst those who had been killed <coughs> and they found him by the side of <coughs> seven dead bodies whom he had killed and he had been killed by the opponents Allah's messenger peace be upon him came there and stood by his, by his side and said he killed seven persons then his opponents killed him he is mine on, and I am his. He then placed, <clears throat> placed him upon his hands and there was no one to left but Allah's messenger. Then he, the grave was dug for him and he was placed in the grave and no mention is made of a bath. He, peace be upon him, is further reported to have said, I am nearer to every believer than himself. So if anyone leaves a bat or a helpless family, I shall be responsible. But if anyone leaves property, it goes to his ears. <clears throat> With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped by Allah. And I bear witness that our Master Prophet Muhammad is a slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his companions, family, and whoever follows his guidance till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, instructed all members of his ummah to venerate all of his companions and warned against abusing them or disregarding them, showing meanwhile that to love them, that's the companions, is a proof of your love to him, peace be upon him, and that hating them is but hating him, peace be upon him. <clears throat> this is clear in his hadith where he said, Fear Allah, fear Allah regarding my companions. Do not make them objects of insult after me. Whoever loves them, it is out of love of me that he loves them. And whoever hates them, it is out of hatred for me that he hates them. And whoever harms them, he has harmed me. And whoever harms me has offended Allah. And whoever offends Allah, then he shall soon be punished. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, Do not revile my companions. Do not revile my companions. By him in whose hand is my life, if one amongst you would have spent as much as as much gold as a hood, it would not be amount to as much as one on behalf of them or half of it. Furthermore, he stated, Allah the most exalted has selected me and selected my companions to me. He glorified as he made for me. <clears throat> from among them ministers, supporters, and relatives my, by marriage. So he who verbally abused them will have the curse of Allah, the angels, and all mankind upon him. And neither obligatory nor surrogatory acts of worship will be accepted from him. 
He who carefully investigates the biography of the prophets' companions will reach the conclusion that they were not to reach this high rank and superior status, status unless they were sincere to Allah, the most exalted. Truthful in their love to his messenger, peace be upon him, they strove against themselves, supported the truth and defended it, preferred the public interest to their private interest, had good morals and dealt well with people. All of these are reasons that made them worthy of Allah's praise and his prophet's love, to the extent that he, peace be upon him, placed his trust on them. <coughs> the companions, may Allah be pleased with them all, led the way to change the face of life and shatter the darkness of injustice that filled all the corners of the earth before the mission of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Relying on the light of divine revelation, <coughs> they managed to turn this injustice into truth, justice and equality. For all of this, to show love for them is a recommended act. To invoke Allah to them is an act that gets you closer to Allah. To follow their guidance is a means to reach and adhere to their way. Having recorded the traits of both the immigrants and the supporters, Allah glorified, he has said, and there is a share for those who came after them, saying, Our Lord, forgive us, and our brothers who preceded us in faith, and put not in our hearts any resentment towards those who have believed. Our Lord, indeed, you are kind and merciful. Commenting on this verse, Imam Arazi, may Allah be pleased with him, said, he who comes after the immigrants and the supporters shall invoke Allah to them and to shower them with his mercy. In this context, we affirm that highlighting the status of the Prophet's companions and showing their virtues <coughs> reinforce the rule of the good example which is indispensable to our youth today. That's because educating the youth to follow the guidance of a good example has a tremendous impact on promoting ethical and positive behavior and enhancing moral values in the society in general and in the hearts of the young generations in particular. I wish you, we would properly understand the rank and status of the Prophet's companions, take them as role models, follow their guidance, learn lessons of self-sacrifice, generosity, giving and sacrifice with one's souls, property and offspring from them, and follow their footsteps to construct the land, build civilizations, and bring forth benefits for our countries and people in a way that shows the essence and tolerance of Islam. <coughs>